Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me today in our third iteration here on the Founders Log or the thought process behind myself, Calvin Wineland, um, your host with the American Butchers Project, our beef jerky that we are currently in production of. Today marks the 10th of December, and as I said, today is our third iteration into this log. Today's topic of conversation is going to be correlated on the production methods or our methodology into methodology into production value, all the thought process that we're going to go into it. Um, I'm going to cover some different things from bags, labels, um, different things that we are getting into the production value, um, the e-commerce side of production, and getting our product from more on the meat to the actual bag of beef jerky. Last week, we talked about the process of how that actually happens, describing the meat, getting it into specifically jerky or into sticks, but today is entirely on the production value. So what better way to dive right into this than with the bagging and the casings that we're currently running? So this has been an interesting conversation that I've had with a few suppliers um, in regards to baggaging and jerky. So if you look typically on the market right now, you go to the grocery store, for example, you're going to buy a bag of beef jerky that is designed from the front to the back. The entire bag is dedicated to your specific brand. So that is something that we at American Butcher's Jerky, Jerky Company are trying to eventually get to. Now that process, in order to do that specific thing, that specific type of strategy in order to create that specific type of product, we have to produce almost 10,000 bags in a batch. Now that's 10,000 specific bags because when you go through these production companies, they what they do is they run it on a press and they print your front and back baggage. They seal up three sides of the bags and then they ship it to you. And I'm just gonna give an example. So I talked to a wholesaler who does these specific types of bags out of Washington State. Um, they were gonna tell me that they produce almost 10,000 bags a minute. So for my example, I've only needed 5,000 bags. So they would have basically had to turn their machine on and off in about 30 seconds because they would have produced that many bags. So, this has come to my initial understanding that it is smart to plan for the future, but it is, it is equally as important to plan where you currently are and how to get there. So given that the cost of running those type of machines would just not be effective for where we are now, and we don't produce the yield yet for the amount of beef jerky that we are trying to produce, we are gonna be moving to a different type of model for our bags, we will be using a sealant bag that will then be placing a label on the front of that bag. So it's almost like a vacuum sealed bag that we will be placing a sticker on the front of the bag. I used to call it stickers, but have been sensed with talking with all these companies, they've called it labels. So we are adding a label to our vacuum sealed bag. Now, when we originally were looking at a concept model, we were looking at sizings of bags, and I've ranged between bags from seven by 11, so seven inches long, or seven inches long by 11 inches tall. But right now, I think that we have specialized our bags to match a five by eight. So five inches across by eight inches in diameter. And when it comes to production, one of the things you also have to consider is, is your bag specifically designed for products of food or products of not food? And when I say that, you have to make sure that when you are buying your bags, you have to ensure that it has an oxygen barrier. So for example, in our jerky business, we jerky is gonna preserve longer when it does not have oxygen in it. So when we're looking at bagging, we need to specifically buy bags that are that contain an oxygen barrier inside of the bag. So oxygen just doesn't leak through the bag. That preserves our jerky longer and it increases the shelf life of our product. 
What we're also going to do is include oxygen absorbers into that, which even further enhances the shelf life of our product. But that is something that I did not know when I was first looking at bags, is some bags don't have that oxygen barrier, so oxygen can flow in and out very effectively. And that is something in the jerky industry we do not want to happen. So I've talked to a couple different wholesalers. Um, I Just for an example, I talked to Walton's, um, is a wholesaler on baggage. I've talked to Pack All, which is another great company for baggage. Uh, Tricom Burn Flex or Pacific Bag. These are examples of American-based companies that create bags. When I say American, I've actually looked overseas um, and saw that I could get bags from China or I could get bags from foreign countries and get it very much cheaper. But the whole objective is in my strategy and when we're trying to come up with all of this is to specifically get all of our products made here in the United States. All the way from the bags to the labels to the stickers, every inch of it I want to get made in the United States. It's just a, something, a personal vendetta of myself, something that I've been trying to accomplish from the very beginning. And I thought that I could continue that method into this business. So we've got the bag in, we've got the oxygen absorbers, now we gotta talk about a label. So in a standard label machine, we have to determine the size that we're gonna wanna put on our bags. So we decided that our bag is gonna be five by eight. Our bag is gonna have a little hole in the top, almost like a hanger, so you can hang the bag. The bag is also gonna have a tear at the top, and the bag will have a Ziploc on the top, so you can preserve it when you're not always eating it. Now, when it comes to labels, since we are adding a label onto our package, we have to design that label. So I've gone with a, another label company, like I said, out of Washington State, and I'm currently in the process of talking with them about the design. So they have a graphic designer who designs your label and they also look at quantities. So we have 5,000 bags, we have four unique flavors, and then we have that fifth option that will go to troops overseas. So we're gonna design a bag that's specifically gonna go to troops overseas. That way we have the four flavors and the extra bag that's gonna go to troops overseas. So we have to design basically five different labels. So I was talking to them and 5,000 roughly labels, 1,000 each, and just talking about some of the numbers that they were saying and some of the information, you have to pay based off the color. So when they do this print, when they print off your labels, they're gonna choose, you have to, so basically, in a nutshell, if I want five different colors on my graphic design, on the graphics, for the label, they have to get five different machines. And so for example, this specific company I'm working for charges $30 per color. And then they charge $50 when you change out the label. So we'll print off one label, we'll do a thousand bags of that specific label with five colors, and then they'll switch out the press to go to the other design. So with our five designs, it changes five times. So for every thousand bags, or five, every thousand labels, they're gonna change the, change the print each time. So that was something that I just didn't know when I was originally coming to this, kind of how I was gonna go about doing this labeling and doing this process. So I thought that was pretty cool. Something that I've definitely learned was you have to make sure that the less amount of colors you use, the cheaper your product will be. Given that I'm gonna be trying to design something that's military related, the military currently uses three colors, our logo has two colors, so we're already looking at five different colors right off the get-go. And some of the things that are important when you're designing your label is you have to make sure that your label has one, your company name, two, it's gonna also have nutritional information if you're gonna include that on your product, Three, if you're gonna include a barcode on your product, which is also important. And another thing that also is ingredients. These are all things that have to be listed on your product, as well as if it's gonna be certified to be inspected on the grocery side. So USDA is the United States like Food Handling and um, Department of Agriculture. USDA is the United States Department of Agriculture. FDA is the Food and Drug Administration. These are all regulated companies that the United States has done to monitor food. So if I ever wanted to sell to a customer 
I do not have to get it regulated. But if I wanna to sell to a, a grocery store, I wanna put my product in a store that is then going to resale it, I have to be regulated by the government. Now, all of our product is regardless regulated by the government because we have a USDA inspector in our facility who is watching over us at all times. So that's awesome and we're clear on the guidelines. But if you're gonna try and do that type of production, you have to have that USDA label on your product, which I didn't know. And that is something that I've kind of learned over the process. And that is something that I'm just kind of trying to figure out. Like. I've been talking to this lady about this concept for the labels and she was talking about barcodes. Why would I have a barcode on my product? Well, barcodes help manage inventory. So if I wanted to scan every bag of jerky that I have, I could keep track of every single inventory that I have on my jerky. So that's something to know if you wanna put it into your labels. So we've got labels, we've got bags. We generally have the entire production the backwork framework of our jerky process. Just to kind of give you guys an update onto the rest of the product, I'm also in the process of looking into calculating the total amount of hours that it takes for an average person like myself to produce said jerky, all the way from the very early beginnings of the product all the way to the back end of where it's actually in the bag. And I've come up with it takes about nine hours for one person to do everything from the start to back. And then we have six hours in the smoker. So it's a whole ordeal process, but that is kind of what our production value is. Um, and that is really what we wanted to talk about in today's third iteration of these founder notes is just kind of giving you an insight as to what I've got going on in my head when I'm calculating all of these things. But it's definitely important to look at a few different options, price gauge where you are, it's important to know where you want to go, but it's also important to know where you are and realize that it's important to start with something small and then work for production. Like the gentleman who I was talking about, the custom-made bags, he said, start small. He's actually going to provide me the bags. Um, I'm going to pay for the bags, but he's going to provide me those specific plain bags that we will be using for our product. And that way, when I'm ready to upscale, I already am doing business with him so I can make that transition very easy down the road. I hope this helps in answering any of your questions in regards to production, the actual production of your product in regards to bags and labels, etc. That is definitely a lot to take in. And if you have any questions, by all means, don't hesitate to ask. But this is just the third iteration and I'm on week three about week four right now of doing all this. And it's crazy to see how much progress we are making. And it's also crazy to see how much progress we still have left to accomplish. But that is the Founders Log episode number three. I hope this helps in any way, shape or form. If it did, please let me know. And you all have a wonderful night and I will hopefully talk to you next week. Bye everybody.